once more. One more. That's all it takes. This is beautiful. To you. Coming to the school is just a pocket change. Is this money scenario? What's splashing to the Sleep Obvious 101 and welcome back to Lucid 9 Blind and last episode guys. We uh We had a moment with Akira in the drama club, she talked about Shoji, and then we learned that Isabel was there. Oh yes, and that she called me insufferable. Which she usually does. But in any case, guys, we're probably gonna find out why that is. So for that, guys, if you guys like me so please like comment subscribe and let's begin and get into this. Wait, Yama being a douchebag. <laughs> Not exactly. My parents aren't billionaires or anything. Maybe you should Maybe, but you can slack and you'll get, come back another semester. You can scrape by at the bare minimum and stay assured that you're, that you'll remain a student. But I need to work for it. So that I'm not a burden on my father. He's already so busy with work, the house, and with me. Education is just out of the question. She seems to shrink inwardly, looking oddly different, defeated. I try to work past my shock and fade, and phrase my next question delicately. Your mom? Um, doesn't... send help? She's dead. Who? Oh. Yeah. Who? Makes it a bit difficult. Just a little. She recovers and stares at me in the eye. You already know that I'm a part time at the cafe, even while I keep up the illusion of being rich to others. But the absolute best thing I can contribute is maintaining an academic scholarship at the academy. My cynical side. Can't help but laugh. Scholarship. Who would work so hard to come to a school like the academy? But at the same time, if I'm fair, I know that it's the one of the best high schools around. So what is a high school? It's like the EOGS, I guess. Cool. That's an awesome school. I want to go to one like this. So as you, shows you just how much quality of education has deteriorated since the depression. To you, Yama, it may seem like I only, I only cared about my grade. And yes, I was controlling. And I wanted to control every aspect of the project. But it wasn't just for a nice letter on a card. It was to keep my scholarship. If I let things fly, I would have lost it. What? If you dropping at the other end, if you dropping on the other end, the most I could have gotten in that course was 50 points. If that's worth half my grade, well, that goes my scholarship. I observe this quietly. Truthfully, I don't even know how to respond. I didn't know. I'm aware of that now. My grades are my livelihood. So this is how I uphold myself about my peers. My extracurricular activities. My Everything, really. A full scholarship to a school like this is nothing to sneeze at. But you're basically a slave to the school. And I won't deny it felt that way. A lot. But it doesn't matter. As long as I can win it back. She goes off. 
Rise drifting into the distance. I measure. And what? Um, um, nothing. Yeah, that sure sounds like nothing. Well, it's not important at the moment. What I want to know is why you were such an insufferable arse on the project. Loath as I am to admit it, you weren't completely awful until it started. Her subtle insults almost seemed to uphold a teasing edge. It promised me to reply honestly. Oh, your nagging was irritating and your opinions were bad. But honestly, I didn't care that much until this one day when you mentioned my sister. Sister? She seems genuinely aghast at this negative information. You don't remember? I didn't even know you had a sister. Oh, interesting. At the time, I felt like an insult. Oh, sister. Don't sit too. Oh, she's dead. Sorry, sorry, and I didn't know. Was that why you dropped the project? Something like that. Well, it makes sense. <sighs> a moment of silence falls between us as we work to process these revelations. Honestly, I feel pretty alien to share a civil conversation with Elizabeth. Up until just a week ago, we've been at each other's throats on a nearly daily basis. This is really like pride and prejudice, isn't it? What? Well, I've gone so long in misunderstanding you. Well, so have I. I guess both of us are, Mr. Darcy. And Elizabeth Bennett. I suppose everyone is to some extent. You're more than most. This half Englishman whose name is Elizabeth. And you as well, Mr. Takes his wealth for granted. Before I can respond to this, she clears her throat. <clears> throat> uh, oh, I, I had to do that. This is getting off topic. Just a moment. I don't know why you were in the train station. Darn instantly rises, even though Elizabeth doesn't seem to have any bad intentions. Just the moment of the trauma puts me on alert. Why do you need to know? It's up to her feet and her voice. Why? Because depending on your answer, you could be the primary suspect in the recent disappearance. A, a primary suspect? But how would she know? Why would she? Why would I? I just... Do I need to spell it out for you? Katsu Kabayashi. He's a policeman. The one who found you in the forest a few days back. Right around the time they found a body in the same forest. A mutilated body of a student that matched the patterns of disappearance. Well, Katsu is in charge of Shoji Katsugawa's case at the train station. And what does he hear from his primary witness? That you were there. Of all bloody incompetent people, you somehow possessed the intelligence and initiative to falsely kidnap and murder four to six people. I can't tell whether she's insulting me or fighting for my innocence. Not that it matters when she knows so much. How do you? She throws her hands up in the air. Fine. My father's the bloody superintendent of the bloody Ismu police department, and Katsu is a family friend. Now 
will you tell me? Elizabeth is the daughter of the police superintendent. Come to think of it, maybe, maybe she has superior knowledge of addressing wounds because of her father in this the police department. And it, superintendent, pieces start falling into place. Elizabeth's a typical outlook on the killings. Her systematic behavior during the school investigation, how she knew how to handle a gun, even just in laser tag. Something makes sense about her. If you're wondering, no, my father doesn't blab about confidential information. I learned as part of an investigation process that involved Katsu interviewing me. What? I wasn't even thinking about that. Then why are you wasting time? Just tell me what you were doing at the station. Napping? I told you, I was helping Ruby move. Those are the words I wanted to say. But come. What was I doing? The train station. I might have just fainted. When I'm sleeping. When I'm lapsing. I have no clue what I'm doing. Elizabeth's frown flies to her. Curiosity. You know what? I don't know. It's possible to tell what's going on. Everything happens so fast. The deaths. Being drafted as an assistant. Then being fired. More deaths. Fights all over the space of what, uh, of what, nine days since school started? You're just being ridiculous. You either did something or you didn't. Look, just say what you couldn't have had anything to do with Jody's death. What if I did? Then say that you did. Is it really that hard? Hard to admit that you could be a serial killer without even knowing? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty hard. Then again, she just thinks that I'm joking. And what if I don't? You're not seriously entertaining this idea, are you? For God's sakes, Yama, you're a murderer! Murderer? That's a load of rubbish! You can't know that for sure. Oh yes, I can. Look, it's bloody impossible. Clearly you're not the actual killer, and you wouldn't be acting like this. Why? Therefore, there is no reason that you would have anything to do with these killings. Stars above, for a rational person, you should do awful little thinking. Ironically enough, the bite in her tone is comforting. She sounds so confident, like I would never be guilty. Like I would never be able to hurt someone. But she doesn't know about my lapses. She doesn't know what I could potentially be a completely different person. Look, you are many things, Yama, but a murder is not one of them. And you, you know what? I'm gonna just speed read this. I'm sorry, guys. You guys can just do this fastly if you want. I don't want to read all of this because I know it's past the time. Thanks, Yama. She filters her eyes. Yeah, what? This time you call me Lizzie. Would you prefer that? Not particularly. It seems feels old. Yeah. Well, done with the pity party. As long as you get a lot, get to done. As long as I can get to done, I suppose, Miss Bennett. Fair enough, Mr. Darcy. After all, I know you're enjoying your parties. Ah, uh, yes. And you can tell my acute desire to eat, drink, and dance at the night away. Why, the night is scarcely young. Wait, it's midnight! <laughs> Alright, guys, I'm gonna clear off this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it here. And the next episode, guys, we're gonna, you know, do some things. So, yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I know it's a long video. I didn't get. Whoa! It's only 15 minutes? Are you kidding me? What? Holy crap!
Okay, I can continue! What? No! I just like said. Okay. Alright. Let's continue then. She leaps away, pointing to my clock and a clear order. Oh, look. Looks like it is. Good God. I have to get going now. Shirley shoves the medicine back into the cabinet and then scrambles to the doorway. I instinctively grab her sleep. Wait, what's the... Let go now. She doesn't look like she's going. So I quickly release her. Something dawns on me. Oh, Academy curfew? What? No, I have a permit. Because my father's job. Does this curfew even exist? Or does everyone just ignore it? And what is it? Homework? Sleep schedule? No, nothing like that. Shouldn't, shouldn't it be obvious? A girl in a boy's home at a late hour? Ah. What? Just that? Eh, it's nothing to worry about. I've had plenty of girls over. Ruby's one of them. Heck, she even knows the key code to my door. Elizabeth doesn't even take this as a comforting. In fact, she turns white as the sheep. There are plenty of girls. It's fine. People don't care around here. I care. Do you know what this could do to my reputation? Oh, yeah. Do you know what this could do to my reputation? <laughs> there you go. I had to be more dramatic. She paces agitatedly, wriggling her fingers. Her worry is stressing me. Look, like I said, it's not a big deal. Big deal. Guys have girls over all the time. Girls have guys over all the time. She stops with her tracks and steers me. Oh, as friends. I kind of knew where this was going. What else would they be doing? You're asking because you don't. No? This is generally why people ask questions. Yes. Oh, let me rephrase that. This is generally why people ask questions. Yes. And point to you, guys come over and guys come over and I just study or play games or eat dinner or whatnot. Have you not been in Japan for that long? Or ever heard of America? <laughs> That's what we kind of do. That's exactly- wait, were you thinking? My god, I can't believe we're having this conversation. <laughs> she covers her face and rearranges her jacket. Quickly opening the door. I'm just going to go now. <sighs> I'm left flabbergasted as she slams the door in my face. I can't get in a word. Oh, that was abrupt. I swear. I'll never know what's going on in that head of hers. Yeah. Or yeah. It probably doesn't mean anything to you, Gamma. But I believe in you. Before I can make a move, she probably shuts the door again. This time I hear the rapidly clink of her shoes against the apartment hallway as she strides out of the complex. She believes in me. Of all people. Elizabeth Oshiro. Believes in me? Jeez. Oh, that's just like the irony of life, I suppose. And I can't deny that it's reassuring in the most bizarre way. She's more confident than I am in my own innocence. It feels like nice to have someone like that on your side. A fighter, a warrior. Someone who you know will tell the truth to your face, even if you don't want them to. I have a friend like that! Guys, I, I swear, I'm not just making this up. I'm being serious. I actually have a lot of friends that actually do this. One of which literally says what's truthful, even if it hurts. Can I trust her? Really enough? I don't know how to do that. Question, anyways. The boost of my mood gets me into an investigating mood, but I managed to stave it off. 
For now, I need to go to bed and get some rest. I'm going to tackle this crime. I need to do it on alert to mine and a lot of sleep. I bet he's thinking to himself. I toss awake and a rattle of jackhammer just outside my window. It's a dark out and eyes are bleary. I rub at them, spring into the street. A handful of men, garbed in bright orange, are huddled around some crack in the middle of the road, surrounded by three large trucks. Definitely construction work of some kind. I fall back into my bed and jam my pillow over my ears, but it's futile. The noise pounds against straight through my wall. No matter what way I turn, it continues to throw me from all sides. I don't know why I'm back to aggravated, but just go with it. Oh, see, he's just that aggravated. Aggravated, I leap out of my bed and head to my living room, needing the tension to. needing the tension between my temples. Of all times to choose construction, did it really have to be at such an ungodly hour? Same boy, same bud. I retreat to the living room and lie on a sofa, but sleep avoids me and looks like it's gone for good. Well, clearly, this isn't going to work. I decide to just get up and start the day. Let's see, breakfast, fridge. Completely empty, of course. To be fair, it's been a while since I've gone grocery shopping, but that does nothing to stop my growing irritation. This day looks like it'll be fantastic. Head to the door to pull on my shoes and put a personal alert on my phone stops me in my tracks. Crimson Crusade, is it? Hey, it's Crimson Crusade! Anyways. I've heard, I have not heard from you in some time, Mr. Troll. Is a night bothering you? Nights are often being reasonable. Oh, no, I don't need another mysterious email. Not need advice. I don't need advice. I don't need any of this. Let me guess. Unreasonable. Wasn't there something about the case that was unreasonable? Come to think of it, maybe I should check into the independent killings again. From the sounds of it, those killings might have substantial connection to this case. Well, I guess the internet is, exists for a reason. Let's draw my phone, running a search on the independent killings. Only a few options pop up when I tap on them. They never load. Only spinning in place. What the heck? I tap again. Refresh. Start my browser. Nothing. My internet's fine. I check the internet website. And it's... And it loads within a second. But nothing with the independent killings. Seriously? The last thing I need is tech problems. Today seems to be one of those days where nothing goes right. I've had those times. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to check the time real quick, guys, and see how many minutes it can be. Twenty-four. Good. I struggle to keep still, breathing deeply to stave off the irritation. My I'm my interrupted sleep paired with nagging twists of anger. I'm starting to haze my brain. Or it's starting to haze my brain. So Wait, oh, no. I need to fight this. First, I have to buy groceries and make some breakfast. Filling my stomach will help me think clearer. I need. Head to the kitchen. 
for my book of coupons. Technically, I'm not sure it on money, but I never, but it never hurts to save. It's one of the few things I can do for my parents. When I look through the drawer, I find a phone tucked away in the back of the crevice. A phone? What's a phone doing here? Curious, I pick it up, turning it over in my hand. I don't recognize it. It's the latest premium Luminescate model. Upscale. Even for my standards, whoever owns this has to be really rich. Be a really rich kid. Try to switch. I try to switch on the phone, but nothing. Not even the empty battery indicator. Odd. Is it completely dead? I pry the back of the panel open only to find that there's nothing where the battery should be. Weird. Looks like someone took out the battery. So now, I've got this random phone. I have no idea where it came from. Wait. Isn't this model that Misaki was talking about before? It says that they're holding some kind of lottery drawing for weed. What? Why would they be giving that away at a drawing? I'm puzzled as well. Someone mind explaining what this weed is? Weed is an acronym for Wall Electric Energy Director. It's a new luminous kit cell phone that runs on a power from a wall socket even without a battery. Oh, that's right. This is the new model that Misaki was raving about. I can just use my universal luminous gate charger to turn it on. I plug the phone into the wall, holding my breath as I tap the screen. The wallpaper glimmers to life. A cheery group of people photo of seven or so people taken in the school courtyard. What? What the? These faces. Are the faces of Shoji, Akane, Haru, and Yahiko? How will look around them are three other students whom I don't recognize, but I think I've seen them around the cafeteria as the Happy Club. Guys, please like what you like so then please like comment subscribe as always guys i'll see you guys later sleep i just want to bounce on out and uh there'll be a link down below to the next last episode so yeah i'll do one more episode after this and then i will be done i think this is episode 44 or 43 it's one of those two in any case guys thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time bye